Reports coming from the SpaceX testing range in Boca Chica, Texas state that the company has just completed its biggest Starship static fire test yet, with 33 Raptor engines roaring to life on the launch pad. The test comes ahead of a scheduled orbital test flight for the Starship as it prepares to become flight ready for the upcoming Artemis mission. Let's take a closer look at this latest prototype and what it accomplished during the test. From the day it was first announced, the Starship program has remained shrouded in mystery. While recent tests have allowed us to observe the vehicle itself, what the final design will look like remains largely unknown. The Starship has a unique design that sets it apart from any other spacecraft ever built. Its stainless steel skin provides thermal protection, making it ideal for deep space missions. Additionally, the Starship is a parachute system that enables it to land safely back on Earth even in rough conditions. The parachute system slows the spacecraft down during descent, reducing the impact of landing and making the Starship one of the safest spacecraft ever built. The Starship is powered by a cluster of Raptor engines, which are some of the most powerful engines ever built. The engines use a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen as the propellant, which provides a high performance and reliable source of propulsion. The use of liquid methane also makes the engines environmentally friendly, reducing the carbon footprint of space travel. With the development of the Starship, SpaceX has opened up a new world of possibilities for space travel. The Starship has the potential to make deep space missions more accessible and affordable, paving the way for the colonization of other planets. The future of space travel is bright, and the Starship is at the forefront of this new era. With its powerful engines, efficient fuel system, and revolutionary landing system, the Starship is set to revolutionize the way we explore the final frontier. Whether it's a mission to the moon, Mars, or beyond, the Starship is ready to take us there. Reports from NASA suggest that the massive Starship vehicle could launch on its first-ever orbital test flight any day now. The agency has a stake in Starship's progress. NASA picked the giant rocket as the first crewed lunar lander for its Artemis program of moon exploration. If all goes according to the current plan, a Starship will put boots down near the moon's south pole in 2025 or 2026 on the Artemis III mission. No Starship prototype has taken flight since May 2021, and all of its jaunts so far have reached a maximum altitude of just six miles or so. However, observers have now noted that SpaceX has begun pre-launch testing of the craft by simulating its engines for an upcoming flight. SpaceX's desire to fly an orbital mission with Starship prompted a lengthy environmental review by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, and there are still several things to finish up. That FAA review, called a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, examined Starship activities at Starbase, SpaceX's facility near the city of Brownsville in South Texas. The FAA concluded that the assessment in June, following numerous delays from late 2021 due to the need to consult with other agencies and deal with public comments. The FAA said this summer that SpaceX needs to take 75 actions to reduce its environmental impact on the area. Despite SpaceX founder Elon Musk saying several times that Starship would be ready to go orbital soon, Musk recently said the target was November, it seems that SpaceX hasn't quite finished with those FAA action items. The coming mission aims to have to prototype 165-foot-tall Starship vehicle into orbit atop a super-heavy booster that has a height of 230 feet. The stacked hardware is the tallest rocket system ever. SpaceX has already conducted several static fire tests in 2022 to get Starship ready for the approximately 90-minute mission that, if successful, would see the spacecraft splash down off the coast of Hawaii. It's unclear how much prep work remains before SpaceX is ready to launch the mission, however. SpaceX's human landing system contract with NASA requires several successful spaceflight tests before Starship will be authorized to put astronauts on the moon. NASA is also seeking a second vendor for crewed Artemis landing missions, but more options won't be ready until Artemis 5 at the earliest, putting SpaceX in line for landings on Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 in about 2025 and 2027, depending on how earlier missions go. As the Starship edges ever closer to the orbital test, SpaceX has just conducted its most ambitious and powerful test to date with its Starship Mars rocket. The company ignited 33 Raptor engines on Booster 7, a prototype of Starship's first-stage super-heavy rocket, during a static fire test at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. Static fires are common pre-flight trials in which a rocket's engines are briefly ignited while the vehicle stays anchored to the ground. And SpaceX is gearing up for a flight with Starship. The program's first orbital test mission, which apparently will involve Booster 7, 
and an upper stage prototype known as Ship 24. That landmark flight could launch before the end of the year. This static fire could be a big step toward the orbital liftoff. It doubled the previous highest number of Raptor engines that SpaceX had ignited during a Starship engine test, but there's still considerable work to do to demonstrate Booster 7's flight readiness. The vehicle boasts a whopping 33 Raptors. SpaceX is developing Starship to take people and cargo to the Moon and Mars, as well as perform a variety of other spaceflight tasks. Starship prototypes have flown a handful of test flights to date, but none of them have gotten higher than about six miles in the sky, and none of them have involved a super heavy vehicle. SpaceX has already inked a number of customers for Starship, including some private customers that have also signed up to ride Starship on missions around the moon. Billionaire Yusaku Meizawa booked an entire flight, for example, and space tourism pioneer Dennis Tito and his wife Akiko bought two seats on a different mission. The Starship has the ability to carry up to 100 passengers to the moon, Mars, and beyond, giving people the opportunity to experience space travel in a whole new way. With its comfortable cabin and advanced life support systems, the Starship is the perfect vehicle for space tourism. And with its powerful engines and efficient fuel system, it can carry out long-duration missions with minimal interruption. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. Space tourism offers many benefits both for the individual traveler and for society as a whole. For the individual, it offers the chance to experience a once-in-a-lifetime adventure and the opportunity to see our planet from a completely new perspective. For society, it provides a new source of revenue and jobs and helps to advance the field of space exploration. While space tourism is expected to be a big part of the Starship's future, the craft is needed for several groundbreaking scientific missions. After a successful splashdown of the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean, NASA Administrator and former Senator Bill Nelson shared that his agency plans to go to Mars by the end of 2030. Senator Nelson struck an upbeat tone after NASA had a great Artemis One mission, and the remarks were made during a post-splashdown press conference in which he also shared details for SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. The event was attended by several agency officials, including Michael Serafin, NASA's Artemis One mission manager, who shared his final thoughts on Orion's performance as it entered the Earth at breakneck speeds for a successful landing. Throughout its journey to the moon and back, Orion performed better than NASA engineers had initially expected. And the spacecraft's power generation, done through solar panels, generated more power than expected. As part of the mission, NASA added additional test objectives to stress the vehicle and learn more about its performance for future missions. The next Artemis mission will involve a crew, and not only will NASA use the data for the next mission, but it will also make changes to the ship. Administrator Nelson also shared crucial details about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. This is currently the only vehicle that has been chosen by NASA to land humans on the moon as part of the Artemis program. He announced that SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed landing in 2023 and then to do the crewed landing late in 2024. While delays are possible due to the Starship being a brand new concept, all signs point towards the craft being ready in time. Starship is the centerpiece of Musk's eventual plans to head to Mars. Although SpaceX makes its money from launch services, the company is also focused on developing technology for future space exploration. In 2011, Elon Musk told delegates at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in San Diego that he planned to take people to Mars in 10 to 15 years. Three years later, at the International Space Development Conference, he said the reusable rocket stage would be a step in getting to the Red Planet. In 2016, Musk unveiled his technological plan for Martian transport, which is a part of his plan to create a self-sustaining Red Planet colony in the next 50 to 100 years. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which will take you inside SpaceX's newest $7 billion Starship factory. Do you think the Starship needs more boosters for the Artemis mission? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.